Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at control characters in strings. So let's define a string. Um, so I'm going to write here string, I'll call it text. I'm giving it a generic name because I don't really know what it's going to be exactly. But I'll write some text here. Um, what should we write? To be or not to be. That is the question. All right, so we've got two sentences here, and we can output that sysout uh, and output text. So let's run this, and we've got the output as we expect. Now, uh, within strings, um, because they are simply just text, you can use um, more or less any character you want to use. Uh, almost any character that you might feel like using is valid in there. It's just ordinary text. But um, we can put control characters in there. Uh, so all of the characters we've got in here are printing characters. Uh, well, in a way, even the spaces. I'm not sure how technically how it's classified. But the point is that they all um, they all visibly display uh, in, in your output. So the letter B visibly displays as it is. Uh, the space, um, well, that just creates space. So I guess it's a non-printing character. Uh, anyway, let's not worry about that. But um, the rest all, all visibly display. But there are non-printing characters. And these are things that alter the formatting of your string. So they don't actually display themselves. They alter uh, the position of it somehow. And probably the most commonly used one is the new line character. So the, the non-printing characters or control characters start with a backslash. So backslash N means new line. So at the point where I have this, we're going to create a new line. In other words, we're going to see that these two sentences are now on two separate lines. And we don't want that space anymore because um, we don't want to start a new line with a space or whatever. Let's run this. And you can see we've got that on two separate lines now. Another really common character um, that you might want to use is tab. So um, let's, let's indent the first line with a tab. So you can put it anywhere in your string. Uh, but we'll, we'll put it at the beginning here. Let's write slash T. That gives us a tab character. So when we run this program, we can see that the first sentence has been indented by one tab. We'll put another one in because this looks ugly. Let's at least line them up. So directly after the new line, I'm going to write slash T. So we've got a new line here, followed by a tab character. And if we run this, now they're both tabbed in one tab. If you actually, for some reason, want a slash in your um, in your string, uh, because slash normally starts a control character, you can't just write slash in there. It will think I mean backslash O. It will think that must be some weird control character. So we get an error. I don't think backslash O is a control character, or if it is, I haven't used it. But anyway. Um, it's not valid to just put a slash in by itself. If you actually want a slash in there, you have to write two slashes, and then it works. So here we've got to be slash or not to be. Okay, anyway, let's get rid of that. That's, that's not something you usually use because you don't normally need slashes in your string. Okay, now I'm going to give you a little challenge. Let's write this in a comment. So I'm going to put slash star, it's a multi-line comment, and it ends in slash star. And this star is purely decorative, it doesn't have to be there, it just makes it look nicer. So let's imagine that we want to output some text on the console that looks like this. So it's indented by, let's say, a, a tab, and it says select an option, colon. And then indented a little bit more underneath that, we're going to say um, one. Um, uh, what should we say? Uh, add an entry to uh, 
view the database or three exit so look at this bit of text forget about the asterisks they're just there for decoration or because they're part of the comment how would you output this text on the command line so you've got four lines here and three of them uh, the first one is indented uh, one tab and the others let's say they're going to be indented two tabs so they're indented one tab relative to the first line have a go at that yourself. It's up to you how you do it, whether you store these lines just in one variable, which is easiest, or you put the numbers in there separately or whatever. That's, uh, I'll leave that up to you. If you want um, a particular, particularly challenging task, store the numbers separately. So one, two, and three, store those in integer type variables and store the rest in strings. Okay, have a go at that task. Try to write a program that outputs this on the command line. And if you can't do it, don't despair. We'll take a look at it in the next video. Hello, in this video, we're going to work through a possible solution to the exercise I gave you in the last video. Do watch this video even if you successfully did the exercise, because I'm going to make a few remarks here. Um, if you've managed to output this text by any means at all, then basically you've, you've done the exercise and uh, you've solved the problem. Uh, if you couldn't manage to do it, then um, maybe watch this video and, and try again. Try to get that working. You should be able to do this, especially you might need to watch the previous video again, but you should be able to manage it. Okay, so I'm going to store all the text here in strings. So the first one, let's call it prompt and set it equal to select an option. And then we'll have also a string option one equals add an entry. Now you can use numbers in variable names, like I've used one here. You just can't put them at the start of a variable. So putting them at the start of the variable gives you an error, but you can use them at other positions in your variable. And we'll have two more of those, which I'll call option two and option three. Option two is going to be view the database and option three is going to be exit. We'll also have some numbers in here. Just we'll separate those out just to make it as complicated as possible. Uh, let's call this value one and set it equal to one. Uh, notice that this is a number and we're, we're assigning it to a variable of type int, which is an integer. If I had a one in double quotes like that, so this gives us an error because here we'd need type string because this is text. So whatever you put in quotes, it doesn't matter even if it's digits and it looks like a number. It's not a number, it's some text. So stuff in quotes is treated as text. Uh, whereas this without the quotes is, is a number. And those things are different. Numbers and text are treated differently in Java. So it doesn't matter if you've got text that just looks like a number. It's not number. It's not a number here. It's text because it's in quotes. Anyway, we'll get rid of those and um, we'll copy this and we'll have another two of them. So value one, two, three, two, three. So we could just output those. Um, we could also store them in another string. Let's call it menu. Uh, so what do we have? We we have prompt, and then we've got option, we've got value one, and then we've got option one. Um, I, I could just type these out in a, in a massive long line. I could add them all together, but I'm going to do something slightly different. Uh, let's, let's in fact start this off as just being an empty string. All right, and then we're going to say menu plus equals. What does plus equal do? Well, um, this um, is the same as writing menu equals menu plus this other stuff. Um, so in the context of a string, what plus equals does 
is it takes the existing string, whatever's already in it, which here is nothing, and then it adds more stuff onto it. So um, by this means we can build up the menu without having a hugely long line. We're going to see another way of doing this later on. But for here, let's carry on like this. In fact, let's, let's set this initially equal to prompt. And then I can add on the values and the options. And what I'm striving for here is I'm striving for elegance. I'm trying to make this look beautiful because I want it to be clear and easy to read. I want it to be very logical so I can see what's happening here. The more beautiful your program is in general, um, the easier it is to modify it and remember what it's actually doing and that sort of thing. Let's try outputting that. So at each stage, I'm using plus equals to add more text to the existing string. It starts off as prompt and then it's prompt plus um, one add an entry. Yeah, there we go. Then it's we take that string and we do plus equals and then join this on. So we're using plus equals to keep, we keep adding more text to the menu. So if we output that, what's it look like? Terrible because it's all on one line. There's no tabs or anything. Let's add in some tabs. So um, to do that, we could just, we could just put them literally in in here. That would work or here. Let's try it. So here I'm going to say, I'm going to put it in double quotes, slash T, plus, do I need anything else? Um, I don't think I do at that point. Uh, so the others are going to start with two slash T's. So I'm going to have slash T, slash T, plus, and we also actually want a dot and a space after the option. So I need to add that in as well. So let's put that here, dot space plus. Okay, so it looks like this. Let's go through and add all of these in. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it. I'm trying to use as few keystrokes as possible as well because uh, it saves typing. Let's run that and still not working because we, we need the new line. It looks better though. So let's add in some new lines. Let's say here plus slash n. I need double quotes there. All right, um, and I need to add these to the end of every line. So now I finally I run this and I've got my menu here. Okay. So now this is really a horrible program. I would never normally write a program like that. It's the best we can do um, if we, on the one hand, divide everything up, putting everything into separate variables. But on the other hand, uh, we stick to things that we've seen so far. We don't use programming constructs that we haven't seen yet. Um, but uh, with some more knowledge, we could reduce this down to a much smaller program. Uh, and at the very least a more elegant program that doesn't have all this repetition in it. There's a lot of repetition in here which we could eliminate and we're going to see how to do that in a future tutorial. So if you did something that output this text correctly, um, give yourself a pat on the back. If you did something horrendously complex like this then that's amazing, that's really wonderful. Um, if you didn't then I suggest typing this out. Try typing it out for yourself to see what it does. You can even output the menu like here before you've completed making it so you can see what that does. So if I run this, so now I should have two menus. So I've got this menu fragment at this point and then I carried on adding two more options to it and I create this second menu which I output here. Okay, so try typing this out if you can be bothered at least, I know it's a bit verbose, and see what it does, maybe experiment with it. Check that you understand this. Check you understand the idea of adding more text onto an existing string. Okay, so we're gonna go on to look at some things that would make this a lot more elegant and have a lot less duplication in it, but we'll leave it there for the moment. So until next time, happy coding. Hello, in this video, we're going to continue looking at format specifiers and I'll show you um, 
an answer to the last exercise that we looked at. So the exercise was to change this to have nicer output. So we don't want it to say um, 32.777. We want maybe one or two decimal places there. Uh, let's, let's maybe get rid of this because I don't think we're going to need it. These are some examples from the last video of using printf and format specifiers. So to change this so that it outputs Celsius to two decimal places, the first step is to change this to print F. Now, if you tried to do the exercise from the last video and you couldn't do it, feel free to pause this video at any moment and then try to do it when you feel you've got enough hints of how to do it. Okay, so I'm changing this to print F and then because I want a new line at the end, I'm going to put a backslash N in it. Although that doesn't make any visible difference here because I've only got one line being output. So if I change this to printf, you, you can't tell that it's there's no new line at the end of it because there's only one line anyway. But let's put that in in case we output more lines. So I'm going to put backslash n at the end there. And that doesn't look any different so far. Okay, um, so instead of putting Celsius here, instead of concatenating it into the string, I'm going to just have one string and I'm going to put percent %f in it. And then after, so then um, this is one complete argument to printf. It's, it's one single string because I'm concatenating this string, sorry, this double value, uh, or yeah, it's double value. I'm concaten concatenating that with this string to make one single string. So now I'm going to put a comma in and I'm going to supply a second argument. The second argument is going to be the value in Celsius, the converted value. So that's going to be substituted into this percent %f here. Let's run it. Okay, so now it looks how it did originally, but the value of doing this is that we can now specify how many decimal places we want. So we can say percent, let's say 0.1, I'll just have one decimal place, percent 0.1f. And if we run that now, it looks a lot nicer. In fact, it looks like it's even rounded up the value to 32.8, which is great. Um, I could also do that with Fahrenheit, so I could get rid of this concatenation here. And here I could, at the start, I could put percent, um, yeah, let's say 0.1 again, percent 0.1f. So now the first format specifier is the, the value in Fahrenheit. So that's going to be my first argument after this argument. So the second argument, I'm going to write Fahrenheit. And then the third argument is Celsius, and it's going to replace this. So they're, they're replacing these uh, these arguments here, second and third arguments to this printf method, are replacing the format specifiers in order. You know, so first first one is Fahrenheit, second one is Celsius. Okay, let's run that. And well, it looks great. Ninety one point zero degrees Fahrenheit is thirty two point eight degrees Celsius. Hopefully, that's correct. Um. I'm just wondering whether I should put anything else in this video. There are other things uh, I can tell you here. Um, we'll, we'll perhaps leave it there for this video. Try that out yourself and get it working and uh, see how it looks. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.